What's going on everyone? I'm out for a quick ride on the Citizen 3.0 bike, my custom all-wheel drive e-bike. If you haven't seen the video on that, check it out. I go over everything on it. And uh, if you don't know, this bike runs off of, it's got two completely independent systems, right? So the front wheel has its own battery and controller and throttle and the back wheel, same thing, its own battery controller throttle. And I drive it with two separate screens and two separate th throttles, a twist throttle on the right hand for the back, thumb throttle on the left hand for the front and it's an interesting little contraption and i've been saying in all the videos that i think my setup and my system of all-wheel drive is better than the store-bought bike store-bought all-wheel drive for a lot of different reasons and that's what i'm going to do today i'm going to go over all those reasons why i am not going to link everything together as people keep saying in the comments link the batteries link the throttles whatever i think it's a lot better like this so today i'm going to tell you why that is all right guys so here is the setup let's turn on the front wheel and let's turn on the back wheel and again independent system so if you want front wheel you push right here there you go if you want rear wheel you twist right here rear motor is a lot louder and if you want both then you get lightning fast acceleration and it's hard to contain but there you go we are all wheel drive on this bike running off of two separate systems now I'm just wearing a t-shirt and shorts and a baseball cap, so I'm not gonna get too cute on this bike today. But I built this thing for acceleration and hill climb power, and it definitely has that. I mean, if you hit both throttles, it sets you back in the seat. It's got really good pickup. And then, you know, top end speed's like 37 miles an hour, which is still really strong. I don't think I need any more than that, so I'm not really focused on the top end. I really just want that strong acceleration feel. That's what's the fun part, right? And there's a lot of reasons why I like this setup a lot better than, I do have one store-bought all-wheel drive and I think this functions better than that store-bought all-wheel drive. So the first thing I'll say, here's reason number one why I think this is better. And that is that I have two independent systems, so I have a backup system should one go down. If something happens on the uh, front motor, or controller or battery, I've always got the rear one to get me home and vice versa. So you have a backup system can't say that about store-bought all-wheel drive now reason number two why I think this is better is that I have three different drive modes I've got front-wheel drive like that I've got rear-wheel drive and I've also got all-wheel drive if I do both so some of the store-bought all-wheel drive bikes for example I have the fabulous EMX extreme bike which is a dual motor bike but it's when you're riding it around normally it's in rear-wheel drive and then when you push the button for all-wheel drive, both motors kick in, right? But you can't do just the front wheel. You can only do rear or all-wheel drive. Now I know there are some bikes out there where there's a switch on the handlebar where you can actually select front, rear, or both. So it doesn't have all of the all-wheel drive beat in that instance, uh, but I would much rather be able to just operate throttles than constantly be flipping a switch back and forth on the handlebars or pushing a button this is a lot easier and there's never a question what drive system you're in with this you don't have to look down and see where the switch is or where the button is in or out you just you always know based off what hand you're using and what throttle you're using now going along with that is actually reason number three where i think this is better and that is switching between the drive systems is instantaneous i can go from rear wheel to front wheel to all wheel back to just front to rear and it's it's all on the fly, literally instantaneously on the fly. The other bikes can't do that. You're gonna be flipping switches and pushing buttons and, and all that. So this is, it's quicker to change between the drive systems. And uh, you know, on that EMX Extreme bike I've got, the way that functions, it's actually, you can't instantaneously jump into all wheel drive. So if you're going up a hill and you're in rear wheel drive and you push the button that it's got to make it all wheel drive, the all-wheel drive doesn't kick in until you release the throttle or stop pedaling. You have to disengage the drive system before it can kick into all-wheel drive. So you kind of lose a lot of momentum with that, which is not great when you're going up a hill and you're like, oh no, I need all-wheel drive. You push the button. It doesn't kick in until you stop you know, or lay off the throttle and then let it kick in and then twist the throttle again. So it's there's some momentum loss and it's not an instantaneous transition like you've got with this bike. All right, what are we up to now? I think reason number four. So for number four, I'll say, I've got the ability with this setup to modulate the throttles independently. 
So if I want to twist the rear throttle full blast and just do the front wheel half throttle, I can do that. You can't do that on a store-bought all-wheel drive bike. It's just whenever you hit the throttle, both wheels are getting the same amount of power immediately, right? This, I can give each wheel as much power as I want it to have, which if you've ever ridden an all-wheel drive bike, you know the value in that because you don't want that front wheel spinning out on you because it's getting too much power on loose terrain. Now, reason number five kind of goes along with that is that I can program each one of these systems independently, and I've got them programmed separately. The rear wheel is set up for just a hard punch off the line, max power, right? The front wheel is set up with a slow start. So when I do a launch, I don't get quite as much wheel spin because the front wheel is on slow start setting. So you can't independently <laughs> get away from you with the fast start. But uh, on the store bots, you can't independently program each wheel. So I've got that up on them as well. Now with each wheel being on its own separate side here, you know, the left hand's always running on the front, right hand's always running on the back, I always know what wheel I'm engaging and how much and, and when. There's no, like I said, looking at buttons or looking at switches or anything like that. It's all just kind of intuitive, you know? You really get a good feel for driving this bike. That's why I like it so much. It's so, that's why I like motorcycles too, because there's a lot going on. You got to shift with your foot, you got to brake with your hand, your foot, you're clutching with your hand. There's a lot it's like a kind of a dance and this is kind of the same way you're twisting one throttle and pushing this one in and kind of making the bike perform as well as you can you're you're actually in charge and driving the bike and engaging what drive systems you want at all times like see going up this hill twisting that rear throttle it's really kind of jolty but the front is so gradual it's a nice smooth takeoff if i want smooth takeoff i just use the front and if i want a hard hit you hit the back and you can see that I was moving, I hit the rear motor and the front wheel did a burnout as we were, as we were going. That's, that's crazy. I love this bike. Now the next thing, I, what are we even up to now? Like seven? Somewhere in there? I don't know. But the, the next thing I'll say is the pedal assist. So I have the pedal assist connected to the rear wheel, but not the front. So there is no accidental engaging of the front motor. The only time I ever get front motor is when I push the throttle. So pedal assist is not, not connected to the front wheel. It doesn't need to be. I don't want that front wheel spinning unless I ask it to by hitting the throttle. So that is another thing you can't really do with a store-bought all-wheel drive. You know, have your pedal assist connected to just one wheel. Now, another reason I did set it up this way is because, I, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just some guy that's monkeying around building stuff in his shed, right? And I wasn't sure about connecting multiple motors and everything set up off of one battery. That's kind of the reason I wanted to use two different batteries. I didn't want to over discharge the battery too quickly at once. I didn't know how that worked, if that was going to damage it. So that was part of the reason I set it up on two different systems and it's worked well. And one of the last things I can think of, which isn't really a, you know, a reason I did it this way or a reason I want to keep it this way, but it's just kind of a, a side thing that happened because of how I set it up. And that is I have uh, two wiring harnesses on this bike so i have double plugs for everything and that's why i have two headlights because i ended up with two headlight plugs so i can run both these headlights you know run one of them runs off the rear system one runs off the front so by having these two different wiring harnesses i end up with the ability for double headlights both running off the bike and i can do double tail lights too if i want both running off the bike so that was just kind of a, a side thing that happened because of the way this is set up uh, disadvantages on it i haven't found a whole lot of disadvantage really i guess i you have to have two hands to drive it i guess that's a disadvantage i can't you know be all-wheel drive riding one-handed but i don't really ride one-handed that much but i guess that would be a disadvantage i mean I, I don't know you have to have a place to store the second battery you know i've got it in that rear pack which I bought a small battery because of that. I still wanted to be able to utilize my rear pack for carrying stuff. So you have to, I, I guess added weight is a disadvantage. This bike weighs 91 pounds, but with the amount of power, the power to weight ratio, like 91 pounds is nothing on this thing. It just, you can go as fast as you want. But it's really set up really well for me it's custom for me you know this isn't i guess i'm not advising everyone to do it this way i just wanted to explain why i wasn't going to link everything because that was a very common thing that was said link everything 
no, I don't want to do it because you saw the reasons why. It's really beneficial for how I ride to have it set up this way. And there is one last thing that needs done to this bike and that is brakes. I got to get on that. I, don't not, I do not have hydraulic brakes yet and it really needs that. When you're trying to come to a stop from 37 miles an hour, you, uh, <laughs> you better have some stopping distance because it, uh, it's, it's, it's terrible right now. It is terrible. The brakes are awful. I have hydraulic calipers on so cable actuated calipers it's not enough for this bike at all all right so what do y'all think do you agree with my uh, reasoning for not wanting to link everything together do you agree with that let me know in the comments you think it's a whole load of crap <laughs> but again so we got our front motor that is running off of our front controller here and then a battery inside the bag there and then this is the rear system battery controller motor and I've just got this tiny little battery inside here Eight, eight amp hours. I have not checked the range on this bike. I'm trying, I'm trying to decide how I would even do a range test on this thing. It's kind of irrelevant. I don't really ride it for long distances. So I just want that awesome pull off the line. And that's what this thing delivers. That's why I like it so much. But we'll have to get this thing lined up against maybe some other bikes. See how it, how it does. But it's got some good pull off the line. If you can keep traction on the front wheel, that's the thing. It's pretty hard to keep that thing planted. It just wants to spin out like crazy. That's why, and that's even programmed with the slow start. It's just the back wheel pushes you along so hard that the front wheel just can't keep traction. All right, I have successfully avoided the rain so far. It does not look promising over there, but if you enjoyed this video and uh, you like stuff like this, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button and checking out some more of my videos, including more on this beast of a bike here, the Citizen. 3.0. I think that's all for today. Thank you everybody for watching.